Mathematica's sophisticated graphics engine makes it easy for you to create, combine, and annotate 2D or 3D graphics, even with no prior knowledge of the Mathematica language. Let's make a new section. So Format, Style, and Section, or Alt-4, and let's go ahead and call this Basic Graphics. This will get you started on some graphics work. So go ahead, um, with our equals sign, I'll, I'll type equals, or go to the Cell Insertion Assistant and click on Freeform Input. And again, maybe you don't know the Mathematica language well enough to do your first graphic. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it take care of this for me. So I'll say graph sine of x over x. I'll hit Shift Enter and let Mathematica figure it out for me. So again, when you use the equal sign, it's going to uh, use the internet connection that you have uh, and connect that to our servers. Our server will translate what you typed into the Mathematica language plus give you that output. Now all of these calculations above never used an internet connectivity. It's local to your machine, but once I use the equal sign, it's going to help me in that process. It's going to use that internet connection to translate my language into actual mathematical language for me. So here's that plot. Now let's do another one. I click below this to make a new horizontal line, and I'll go to the equal sign again, or just hit equal sign on my keyboard. And we're going to say plot, or I can use graph, or, or whatever. Um, let's do sine of x times y. Now we're going to do a three-dimensional graphic this time, which the function name in Mathematica's programming language is plot 3D versus just plot for a 2D graphic. And then you get the result. Any 3D graphic in Mathematica, you can rotate it just using your mouse and clicking on it and moving the mouse around. You can zoom in and out of it, or you can pan around it, uh, around your screen. So lots of options with 3D graphics. Now the panning around the screen, which I'm doing right now, is shift with your mouse moving, and then to zoom in and out on a Windows machine is control, and then use your mouse to zoom in and out also. Now again, remember that plus sign to the right, which is to show all results for that calculation. There's a number of results we got back for this. So Mathematica thought this was the result closest to what I typed in, but you know maybe I wanted to find some other results as well. We can click on that plus sign. I can see how it was interpreted, for example. It thought I meant plot of sine of x times y, which is what I intended. But it also gave me a contour plot too. Maybe that's actually what I was more interested in as what was that contour plot. So I can click to select this as input, and I can right click uh, for some other options as well. To copy the input, maybe I want to replace the cell with this input, collapse it, evaluate it, etc. I'm actually going to replace the cell with this input and then hit shift enter to calculate and now I'm actually doing, I'm going to do a contour plot because that's the function that I chose. With any contour plot I can scroll my mouse over to see what these values are. But again, it's, it's in Mathematica's programming language. I can go in and then change any of these things too. Maybe I want sine of 2x times y and then hit shift enter to calculate that. And I get this different looking contour plot. So pretty nice to go from the equal sign or the free form input over to the Mathematica programming language if that's your desired methodology. Now you can create multiple graphics in the same set of axes too. Let's go ahead and hit Alt-5 uh, again for a new subsection and we'll call this Creating Multiple Graphics. Hit the down arrow key to make a new horizontal line. I'll go ahead and hit the equal sign and we'll say plot sine of x and sine of x over x. Let's calculate that and see what that looks like. So this is one way I can combine multiple graphics. We notice that the Mathematica language for that, remember, the curly braces mean any lists or ranges. So the range for this is from negative 8 to 8. But there's a list for two functions that I'm plotting, which is enclosed by curly braces as well. So we can set that on this uh, set of axes. If I did that with the Mathematica programming language, I can go ahead and click um, on this. And now we see the Mathematica way to do it. Uh, and then I can go ahead and change these values from negative 10 to 10 if I want to or whatever you want. Now there's also a nice little function I want to point out, and it's called a tool tip. You can add it to any graphic. So if you plot multiple graphics on the same set of axes, you can add tooltip in here uh, with a square bracket, and that way you can see what function is uh, which graphic. So I've added tooltip with square brackets around it here and uh, here. Now when I move my mouse over these values, I can see what sine of x is versus sine of x over x. And you can also label those in different ways too. Now you can also show graphics together as well. So here I've created multiple graphics you can uh, show them together. Let's actually make a new subsection. We'll call this Showing Graphics Together. 
hit the down arrow key to make a new horizontal line. I'm going to call this uh, plot1 as the variable equals plot, my function name, x squared plus 3, something pretty simple, and x goes from negative 5 to 5. The semicolon suppresses the output, so maybe I don't want to see that plot just yet. I don't need to have that thing plot out. So hit the enter key to make a new line. I'll say plot2 equals plot x plus 5, and x goes from negative 5 to 5. Close that uh, curly brace and close the bracket and semicolon. Again, I'm suppressing that output also. One more enter key, and I'm going to show these together using the function show open square bracket, plot1, comma, plot2, close square bracket. So it's showing these two things together. Hit shift enter, and now you see both graphics on the same set of axes um, as well. So two different ways to combine multiple graphics by one line, or by using the show command to show multiple graphics that you've uh, set those variables to uh, together. Now, you can always add options to graphics. So there's a function in Mathematica called options, and you can do options on just about any function there is. For example, for plot, there are lots of different options I can put on uh, a, a graphic. By default, the axis for a graphic is true. Maybe I want it to be false, so I can say that. Or I can add an axis label, or by default, filling on a graphic is none. So let me go ahead and make another plot. Let's say plot um, sine of x over x. Remember, the control and the fraction sign together will put in that two-dimensional form. Hit the right arrow key to get out of that denominator, and we'll say curly brace, x goes from negative 5 to 5. Now, with filling, I can add an option where I can add filling to this graphic. So after the last curly brace and before the last square bracket, I can hit comma and say filling arrow is to the axis. So I just copied basically what was above, filling arrow none. I want filling arrow axis, and you can programmatically do that anytime you want. Pretty simple stuff. You can also use the palette to do that instead. Let me open that basic math assistant palette again. Under the 2D tab, you'll find a number of options you can point and click if you want to do so. So for example, let me just put my mouse here and go to uh, range. Maybe I want the range, the y-axis, uh, to go from negative 1 to 1 instead of negative 0.2 to 1, which Mathematica picked for me. I can click on plot range for the y value and make that y value 1, and now you can see the graphic go from negative 1 to 1. You can also click on, uh, if you want to set the Y minimum and maximum, all kinds of options to point and click to add that language on there for you. You can also use freeform input for the very same reasons. If I hit the equal sign and say, draw red frame, it's going to send that message off via the internet to the Wolfram servers. We're going to interpret that as show that last output and then add a frame around it and also make that frame red. So with my natural input, Mathematica figured out for me what I wanted and drew that red frame. So three different ways, again, to add options to your graphics or any calculations, for that matter, in Mathematica. Last thing on basic graphics, let's go ahead and uh, add one more subsection using Alt-5. Let's call this annotating graphics. So maybe I want this output from above, and I can go ahead and click on that and annotate that one. But I'm going to uh, show you one other trick. I can type percent sign 43, hit shift enter, and there is the graphic again for me to play with. Now I can click on that, drag it, make it bigger or smaller. But what I want to do is to annotate this thing, and I don't want to have to do it programmatically. So I can go up to graphics and drawing tools. I can go ahead and click on the arrow, for example, and draw an arrow on this thing. I can click on text uh, to add some text. Let's say, what is this point called? So I've added this text on here. Now you can change sizes, change faces, you can add italics, whatever you want. You have all kinds of options and abilities to annotate the graphics that you are playing with and utilizing for your presentations, your classes, your research, whatever it may be. It's nice to be able to quickly annotate graphics. Now you can also grab the graphic. You have complete control and interactivity with the graphics you make. And then you can also double click on the curve we made here to open up and see all the points of the graphic. So if you want to click and drag, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but the point is you have complete interactivity, which is very nice with those graphics. So Mathematica also gives you the tools to create interactive models to help you explore hard to understand concepts, test theories, and better understand your data. In the next screencast, you'll learn how to quickly take any calculation or graphic you create in Mathematica and turn that into an interactive model as well.